We're dealing with uh, sequences, this first worksheet on diverging and converging. I'm going to try to go quickly through this uh, information. We were given that negative 4, 1, and 6 were uh, the first three entries of that. If I start taking any term and subtracting the previous term, I find out rather quickly that the common difference between the terms is 5. Okay? With the common difference between the terms being 5, I can go ahead and decide that it's arithmetic and I need the explicit formula. I know the first term is negative 4. I know the common difference between the terms is 5. This is the explicit formula which will come in very handy. Um, we are going to generate some terms and look at a graph here quickly. Um, let's see if I can. So get into your calculator. We are going to get into the, um, the lists, clear out everything in your lists. Go to the very top of the list. Uh, since if I go too fast for you, just make sure you pause back up, to copy things down that you need. So I'm going to run through a, a very simple, instead of entering the numbers 1 through 150, I'm just going to do this one time with sequences, or a sequence generating function. Uh, right above the, the step button is list, so second, list, and uh, we can go over to operations or ops. Okay, the fifth one in the list is sequence. And so we want that one, okay? Please make note that you're at the top. You're not in the first entry of the list. Um, you might want to just follow this instruction. The very first entry... Sorry, I don't want to point that finger. The very first entry in the list is an X. That represents the function that we're dealing with, Y equals X. And then we are telling it what variable we're using and then what starting point we're using and what stopping point we're using. So the first one represents the, the function that you're using. The second one represents the variable that you're using. And then your starting point and stopping point. Okay? When, it does, when, it, when you let it do that, it will enter the numbers from 1 to 150 to prove it to you. I will go to the bottom of the list by using the up arrow and that will get me from one end to the other rather quickly. Okay. We're going to go to the second list. In fact, I'll use that sequence formula. Uh, I'll, I'll show you two different ways we could have done that. We could do the sequence formula again. Okay, sequence. This time, the expression is right there. Negative 4 plus 5, parenthesis, x minus 1, and parenthesis, comma. Then you tell it what variable you're using, x comma, then you tell it what starting value, 1, comma, 150 is the ending point. Okay? So it will enter all those values. Now that is one way to do it. We could have also done it, and this probably is a lot easier, but I did want you to see how the sequence formula generator is kind of nice. But we could use this, negative 4 plus 5. Now instead of using x, we're going to use, like we've commonly done in the past, a list 1 minus 1, right? Well, we're putting all of our x values are in list 1, so we're using those. And you're not going to notice a difference because it's the exact same set of numbers. Okay, we, I want to show you the uh, graph. Well, first of all, I want you to kind of look at the bottom of the screen. You can see the actual number, maybe in a little bit larger print. Uh, I'm just going to hold this button, and, and as it continues down to the bottom at 150, you can take a look. Now, remember that converging means that the sequence has to get closer to one single number. It can't be getting closer to, uh, I mean, it can't be getting further away. It can't be uh, jumping back and forth. It has to be getting closer to one single number. But as you notice, it doesn't look like this thing's slowing down at all. You're getting all the way to the end, which is 741 is the 150th term. Uh, then, uh, doesn't look like it's slowing down. There is no limit. Let's take a look at the graph. Remember, a scatter plot is above y equals or, um, or stat plot, and then make sure one of them is selected to the on position and uh, scatter plot with the dots. And I'm actually choosing the dot uh, so that it's easier to see because there's going to be a lot of them. When you go to zoom nine, you're going to see what looks like a straight solid line. Uh, I'm going to use the zoom in feature because I want to show you something. 
this is not a solid line. And now you can see the cursor blinking in the middle of the screen, so I'm going to hit enter. It's going to zoom in, and you're going to start to see that the points are not really connected at all. There's space in between. I'll hit the enter button again. You can see now that there's lots of space in between. That's because the values we're putting in are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because we are looking for the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. There is no 1.375 term. Okay? Yes, I made that up. Uh, but there's no terms in between, right? So that's why there's all this space in between the points, because we're just looking the, at the sequences. But when I look back at this, I know we stopped at 150 terms. It would keep going. So there is no limit. And if I think that there's no limit, part B says determine if it converges or diverges. It diverges. Okay? And for those of you who don't know what that means, that means there is no limit. Okay? It's not getting closer and closer to anything. So the word diverges means no limit. Please don't, please don't get to a quiz or test and think diverges and then you tell me some number. Because then I know you don't understand what diverges means. If you think it converges, then you tell me what. And, and part C says, if it converges, give the sequence's limit. So obviously, I'm not going to put anything on line C because I believe it diverges. I know it diverges. Okay, next one on my list. Okay. This looks like an, uh, a recursive formula for geometric. Now, if you're unsure, write out the first three terms. Multiply by 1.5. Multiply by 1.5. Okay? Now, I, I know it's multiplication by 1.5. That is the geometric way. And so, what do we have here? First term times common multiplier. Now, if you're unsure about the common multiplier, the ratio, Take any term and divide by its previous term. Any term and divide by its previous term. But it should make sense because it was a recursive formula to begin with. Okay, you were multiplying by 1.5. Okay, now, um, if I go into... I think I'm going to clear out my list and only use about 30 numbers instead of 150. If we have the explicit formula, we should be able to calculate the 150th term. Oh, by the way, that, that's going to be a really big number. Um, so if I go back here and just do that, I, I want to see if you can even find it. We'll see. Okay, uh, 150 minus 1. I'm sure everybody knows it's 149. Uh, oh, it does calculate. I didn't know if it would be overflow error. Okay, so that 150th term would be the uh, 3.46 uh, times 10 to the 26th power. Okay, rather big number. Um, when you want to uh, graph this, that's why I'm, when I get back into my lists, I'm, I'm going to get rid of that first one, and I'm going to get rid of this one. Uh, I'm only going to use the first 30 numbers, so second stat, ops, sequence, okay, y equals x, comma, variable, comma, 1, comma, 30, okay. Let it use those values, 1 through 30, and now I can use this. 2 times 1.5 carat and use parentheses around the exponent uh, list 1 minus 1 okay take a look at the graph and if we do a zoom 9 why don't I have to go back and set up the scatter plot again because it already is set on list 1 and list 2 however I am going to go change the symbol to be the square so it's easier to see now, if I go back to my graph, you can see that it's, it's really low, really low, really low, really low, and then it takes off, okay? So it's exponential growth. That does not look like it's stopping. It does not like, look like it's getting closer and closer and closer to anything. So, um, once again, this is another one of those. So you can copy down. We've got the first three terms there. You can either go into the lists and find, you know, find the next, you know, there's the first seven terms. And you can see them down there at the bottom of the screen. You, the bottom of the screen shows you the better numbers, uh, or the more accurate numbers, I guess. You can, you, can, uh, you can round to the tenths or hundredths, probably the hundredths place uh, for accuracy on what we're doing. And uh, it is also a divergent, okay? So there's no limit. Okay, let's look at three. We're going to we're going to speed things up as we go here. This is a, called a rational uh, function. And so um, 
let's get back into our lists and, and see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to clear that out and I'm going to use parentheses. We've got 3x squared um, minus 5x plus 3 in parentheses divided by, oops, why am I using x's? Somebody stop me. My goodness, it's ridiculous. Okay, uh, 4 list 1 squared uh, plus 7 times list 1 minus 2. Okay, in parentheses. Let's take a look at those particular values and see what's going on. It looks like they continue to get bigger, but is it slowing down? That's the question. I'm not sure. Maybe I do need to go to 150. Um, let's just do that. Let's just do the sequence. Oh, man, it's going to take forever to type that thing in. Oh. Um, let's go over here and we'll do uh, second step ops sequence um, x comma x comma 1 comma 150. I didn't think I needed to go to 150, but... Uh, plus, you can also plug in 150 into this equation to find the 150th term. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna do it the like we did before. So let's see. Um, three list one squared minus five list one plus three in parentheses divided by four list one squared plus 7 list 1 minus 2. I promise you there are there are easier ways to handle these things. I'm just trying to show you um, I'm just trying to can make the connection between limits and once we get into the limits I, I've got much better ways of handling some of these issues. Okay so take a look at the values as I continue down the chart. It looks like it is growing but it doesn't look like it's, it's, it's um, I'm trying to make a decision on whether I think it's slowing down. Do I think it's slowing down or is it just continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Okay. Um, it does. It looks like it's starting to slow down. It is still increasing, but it, it looks like it's getting, uh, it's getting to the point where it's starting to slow down. There's your 150th term uh, there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and obviously you can approximate that. Maybe the thousands would be good. Um, so let's see here. Mm, let's take a look at the graph of that. Zoom 9. Oops. Zoom 9. Okay, now in this particular picture, it is showing me that it's approaching a horizontal asymptote. And that's the whole idea of a limit, is it's getting closer and closer to a particular asymptote. Now the big question is, what is it getting closer and closer and closer to? Well, if you would extend that out farther and farther and farther, what you would see is something that I'm going to really show to you later, uh, but might as well show you now. Take the largest power, here I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Whew, some, nope, nope, not that one. There we go. Take the largest power of x in the denominator, that happens to be x squared. Um, really what you're doing is you're multiplying the top and bottom by 1 over x squared. Now I'll show you, th this is painful algebra maybe for some of you, but uh, once you understand it, it will get a lot easier. Okay, so 3x squared times 1 over x squared is just plain old 3, right, because the x squared terms cancel. And negative 5x divided by x squared um, that is negative 5 over x. And uh, 3 over x squared. And then on the bottom, you got the 4x squared uh, divided by x squared. Okay, so that's a 4. And uh, 7 over x, right? Because when you take get rid of one of the x's, that gives you just 7 over x. And minus 2 over x squared. Now, let's understand what's going on. X is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, what happens to this when X gets bigger and bigger and bigger? Negative 5 divided by a million. Negative 5 divided by a billion. Negative 5 divided by a trillion. That's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. In fact, we say that this disappears to zero. That's because it's based on the harmonic sequence we talked about earlier. This is even worse. It's going to zero faster. 
because the bottom's getting larger quicker. This is going to zero, this is going to zero. So we got a lot of stuff that just disappeared in a heartbeat because X is getting so big. But what's staying is 3 divided by 4. Now, go back to the picture, go back to the, the table, the 150th value. Do you see that we're getting closer and closer to 0.75? If we kept going and going and going, we would be getting closer and closer to that value. And on the graph, that's exactly what's going on. In fact, if I put y, point, y equals 0.75 on the graph, you would see that that is the horizontal asymptote we're getting closer and closer to. Do not be deceived and think that those squares are touching the line because it can't. It's an asymptote. Remember that? Okay. Question four. We're talking about, um, well, hopefully you're understanding that we're multiplying by one half, right? It's multiplication by one half. So this is geometric. Um, and I, I'm so used to using G's for geometric and A's for arithmetic, but uh, you can use what you want. If you want to use all A's, that's fine with me. Uh, first term times one half to the N minus one. Now, realize something. These are like exponential growth and decay. So this was an exponential growth. And what happens to exponential growth? It never stops getting bigger. The growth factor is larger than one. Well, what happens to exponential decay? It keeps getting smaller, right? So this is going to continue down and down and down and down and down, cutting in half all the time, never getting to what? Well, well maybe I could put that in really quickly. Uh, stat, enter, just take a look at these values, clear. Okay, so 40.5 oh, oops, sorry, carrot no, 01 minus 1. All right, so just take a look at the values. Some day, okay, sorry, I got paused for some heart, some reason. Okay, uh, and as you continue down, you'll see that it's getting smaller, but it's, oh, now wait a second. You, at first, if you look at the bottom, you think it's getting bigger, but it's not. Remember, these are exponents, right? Ten times, times 10 to the negative fourth, times 10 to the negative fifth, times 10 to the negative sixth. So we're actually getting super duper small uh, and getting closer and closer and closer to zero, right? That has everything to do with what we've talked about millions and millions of times before, uh, the asymptote for an exponential decay function. So question three was a converge. And what did it converge to? It obviously converged to the three quarters. But when we got down here to question four, it was also a converge. And it converged to zero. OK. By the way, make sure you go back and find the, uh, the eighth term, including the 150th term. So plug 150 in. Find out what you get. OK. And you plug in 150. Okay, um, next four questions. I'm going to try to go a little bit faster so we can get this done. Um, now that you have the general idea. Okay, largest power of n in the top and the bottom. This is another one of those where you can take a look at the graph. Um, find the point, see what's going on with the picture. Uh, see if I can do this quickly. Whew, man. Evidently not. I should have done that a different way. Okay, clear down arrow. Um, let's see, eight less one squared uh, plus four divided by five less one to third uh, minus eight. Okay, and it'll spit out the values here soon. And we can go zoom nine, take a look at the picture. And it looks like it's getting closer and closer. And why is there a line in the graph? Because I left it there accidentally. So let me get rid of that line and go to my graph. Why is there like a random point down there? I don't know what that's for. Okay, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Take a look at it when you divide everything top and bottom. Was I even on screen? I hope I was. Um, when you divide everything top and bottom by n cubed, and you go through here and you divide that, that becomes 8 over n, right? So 1 over n cubed, 1 over n cubed, top and bottom. We would get 8 over n 
we would get 4 over n cubed. Obviously, both of those things are going to be disappearing to 0 pretty doggone quickly. Uh, we get 5 and minus 8 over n cubed. That's going to disappear to 0. So we're left with 0 over 5. We know that's going to be 0. So uh, we are converging, and we're converging to 0. And you can go back in your lists and find the first eight terms um, using what we talked about. Okay, so on these next ones, I'm not going to go through the, um, I'm not going to go through and find the first eight terms. You can do that on your own. Okay, so because I'm just trying to speed up the video for you. All you're doing is plugging in one through eight, and you can use the lists for that. This is obviously exponential decay. So uh, since that's happening, understand what the picture is going to look like. The picture we draw is going to look something like this. So hopefully everybody's saying, oh, that's going to converge to zero. Okay, this one uh, looks like it's going down by 8, right? So uh, that's uh, constant difference negative 8. That's arithmetic. And I'm hoping by this time of your life you understand that arithmetic means a linear function. So if you uh, take a look at first term um, plus constant difference, which is negative 8. I guess I didn't need the plus, but times n minus 1. With it being a linear function, it's going to keep going down, 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 and it will never stop. So this is one of those diverging sequence. Um, now, large power of n in the top or in the in the bottom there is n squared. Okay, when you go through and divide everything by that, so one over n squared, one over n squared. Uh, what we're ended up doing is we get ten uh, n. Why is there x's and n's in the same problem? That's really confusing. Okay, so we'll change this to an n, and we'll change this to an n. Okay, so uh, this ends up being 4 over n. We know that's going to be one of those things that dis disappears to 0, right? Because n's getting super huge. Well, on the bottom, we got a 5, and uh, minus 8 over n. Once again, that thing's going to disappear to zero. But, but I want you to notice something in the top. We've got 10n in the top. n's getting super big. This is unstoppable. You can't stop this one. So this one is definitely a, a diverging. There is no limit to this one. Because with the power, uh, with n being in the numerator like that, I mean, take 10 times a million and divide by 5. 10 times a billion divided by 5. 10 times a trillion divided by 5. It's just not going to stop. Okay? So, so that's the basics of this. If you want to find those first eight terms and the 150th, always just plug in the numbers that you need. 1 through 8 and 150. Don't forget to plug in 150. Okay? And make sure you get those uh, values taken. Um, figured out on that particular on those those last five since I didn't since I kind of went through that quickly thanks